who's got two thumbs and finished their merch mystery madness prompts. This guy. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be going over the girl from outer space. Um, Carter Brown. She was a dazzling dark haired import. She had a hundred thousand dollar film contract. She was out of this world and someone wanted to keep her there. Um, it's so funny, like, a dazzling dark-haired import. Let's put a blonde on the cover. Um, and it's so funny. Like, this is a really good um, thing here. Like, on the back, it's like a chaperone, and it gives you, like, um, definitions of, like, what the word means. And then it talks about Kathy Frick, who is um, one of the characters in the book. But it makes you think that the book is about something else. So you could read this, and if this intrigues you, because it's not giving anything away, and because it's, like, almost misdirecting you, like, you could read this and be like, oh, yeah, this book sounds good. And then you start reading it, and you go, wait, the book is not... That's... Okay. You know, so that was kind of cool. So anyway... Um, this was my last prompt to do, um, and I was really looking forward to it, and I'm like, okay, I'll save a Carter Brown book for the end, it's a quick read, super punchy, um, I'll be done with it in no time, you know. One of the things I forgot about Carter Brown since the last time I read a Carter Brown book was... I don't know, some of you will really be annoyed by this, I already know, but he is so loose with his, um, exclamation points, like, everybody is fucking shouting, and again, like, it might be just like someone talking like this, and that's an exclamation point to him. Um, but to me, when I see an exclamation point, I think someone's shouting, um, and it'll be like, someone's telling a story, but when I get to the end, I'm gonna go like this, and then he's like, oh, well, do you, uh, blah, 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 blah. and, like, everybody does it, like, the, the villains, the heroes, the clients, the, um, he even goes to Germany at one point in the book, and people in Germany are doing that to him. Um, so, if you get annoyed by exclamation points, Carter Brown is not the writer for you. And it's sad, because you're really missing out on a lot of good fun. But if you don't mind um, the snappy punchlines all ending like this, then... Um, you, he, like, everyone should read Carter Brown. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, it's good shit. So anyway, this book, Rick Holman is a private eye who works in Hollywood. And he charges exorbitant amounts for his services. And what he does, the studios hire him to keep, um certain things out of the papers like he they pay him well because of his discretion and um in this case there's this chick named monica briar buyer monica buyer and um she is they brought her over from germany and she's like super gorgeous and um they had this, like, bidding war over her contract, and the agency bought her contract, and she's supposed to be the star of a new movie that starts in 10 days over at Stellar Pictures, um, but she's missing. No one has seen her in, like, 48 hours, and everyone's really 
tripped out and there was a note left at her apartment that said, she's out, she's gone, don't come find me. And um, they had a chaperone, a Miss Frick, to watch her to make sure she didn't get into any kind of trouble over the next ten days. Um, and Miss Frick failed. Frick failed. Um, but then we find out that not only did Monica take off, but she took off with the director of the movie that's supposed to start in 10 days. But what's the problem with that, you say? Well, that director is the betrothed to the client of Rick Holman who owns Monica's contract. Do you see how tangled this is getting? Oh, it's crazy. Then we find out that they actually ran off to Europe to elope. Can you believe it? And they're... The stuff that happens in Munich was, like, epic. Like, awesome twist, awesome action, awesome twist, awesome twist. It was like, um, oh, wow, boom, sorry. Um, it was just like a big a manga boom. And there's a couple things in this, and it depends on how you like your mysteries, where, like, okay, let me give you a, a little for instance here. So, Rick Holman goes and talks to this dude. And, um, they do their thing or whatever. And there's some other people there, too. And then, like, a couple chapters later, he's like, hey, remember when I came over to talk to Billy Boy? And they're like, yeah, 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 Billy Boy, um, is uh, pretty upset with some of the things you said. And he's like, yeah, that would really bother me if that was Billy Boy. <gasps> How did you know? Like, shit like that. Like, if you don't like that kind of stuff. Like, there was no clue given that certain people weren't certain people. Um, like, you could see him digging to find out that kind of stuff. But, um, there's no, like, um, there's no clue for you to pick up on unless, like, you would go, why would he ask a question like that? Like, th just, like, weird little stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it's a good Carter Brown book. Um, I haven't read many Rick Holman books, but he doesn't really feel that far removed from Al Wheeler. Um, I feel like when I started reading Carter Brown books, and I was always reading the Al Wheeler books, that like I didn't want to read a Danny Boyd or a Rick Holman or an Andy Kane or um, any of the other... Uh, characters because I'm like I really just identify with Al Wheeler like I I dig him like like he could like read the phone book and it would be a fun mystery you know but honestly like all of them are pretty interchangeable there was one Danny Boyd book I read where his quips were almost too quippy, like too smart ass kind of thing. But other than that, like they're all interchangeable. Like they just have different occupations. Um, so if you're like down with it, like I guess like if you like Al Wheeler, but we're like me and we're afraid to go into other, um, characters, you could totally do it. Um, like, the Mavis books are freaking amazing and hysterical. And I didn't... Well, I mean, it, that was a completely different character. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But, um... Like, her, her books are great. Um... But that's not about that. It's about this. <laughs> the Girl from Outer Space. 
Um, and that was like her marketing thing. Like she was so like amazing that it's like she's from outer space. Like because no one's seen anything that beautiful before. It was kind of hokey. Um, but there's like these brothers that run an amusement park in Santa Monica, like on the pier, and um, like a house of horrors and stuff. So there's all that fun and suspense and like it was just a fun book like you pick up a Carter Brown book and you could read it in an afternoon and never want to put it down like it's just um there's something to be said for that like it's obviously not highbrow literature but um i freaking entertained and like now I'm like oh do I mark that up like if you saw our ridiculous star rating video um, I almost just want to say two thumbs one thumb no thumb um, I don't know but anyway I'll, I, I don't know if I'll ever read it again but if I did I wouldn't mind if that makes sense um, but yeah, man, Starkhouse Press um, has been putting out Carter Brown books like this. Um, this is a Harry Winnington one that I got for uh, my birthday. But um, they'll take three Al Wheeler mysteries and put them in one trade paperback. Um, so if you don't like reading like the old musty paperbacks because if you want to talk about books with a smell this book smells like an old book um if you don't like that you could get those stark house books and those are super good quality and um like i learned on the paperback warrior podcast they are the original printings of the books not the late 70s early 80s um, reprints where they tried to put a little bit of smut in there to make it sell. Um, I don't. It's so crazy. I, I'll probably do a video on that sometime. But they um, added in sex scenes to a lot of the books after 1973. Um, so my bet would be if you have a Carter Brown book and it has a photo cover. Um, that book has added sex scenes. If you have a Robert McGinnis cover or any other kind of painted cover, it's probably the original um, story, um, the way Carter Brown wrote it. Um, but if you have a photo cover, chances are there's some uh, rudy, rude bits written in there that are not well written by any means, like really awkward and awful. Um, descriptions of parts. So, um, did you finish March Mystery Madness? Did you hit all your prompts? Did you? If you did or didn't, let me know down below. Um, if you're a Carter Brown fan, oh, that almost felt weird coming out. Let me know down below. If, um, What's your favorite Carter Brown book? What's your favorite Carter Brown character? Um, everyone who I've ever talked to says Al Wheeler. Because Al Wheeler, he probably wrote more Al Wheeler books than anybody else. And Al Wheeler is just, like, a stud. Like, I love Al Wheeler. But um, Rick Holman was great. Like, he was a great character <laughs> like i don't know so anyway um hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you enjoyed march mystery madness and i will talk to you soon guys see ya